Welcome to the Second Credits Due Workshop in collaboration with Sona. I'm Michelle Lewis. I'm the Executive Director of Songwriters of North America, aka Sona. Sona is a creator's rights advocacy organization we founded uh, in 2015. Hi, my name is Niklas Molinder. I'm a songwriter, music producer, and I'm also the founder of Music Rights Awareness Foundation. Together with Sona and the Iverse Academy, we have created a campaign called Credits Due. Uh, the purpose for this is that we want to help the industry uh, to ensure that all accurate song metadata is attached to the recording at the point of creation. So when the music is out there in the world, everyone can find the people that created the music. So everyone can get credited and paid when the music is used. Uh, we launched Credits to You about a bit over a year ago, mm -hmm. and uh, we are now doing workshops uh, where we talk with creators and we try to highlight actual problems that creators uh, are facing and also try to talk about how we together can solve those problems. Uh, this workshop today is all about songwriting camps and I think that we're also going to talk a bit about co-writing sessions mm -hmm. because that's kind mm -hmm. of the same thing. Okay. How is it for songwriters, producers, artists, musicians, when they meet? What is a songwriting camp? What happens afterwards? And what are the good things? What are the bad things? So that is what this session is all about. And we have these four amazing songwriters that was part of a songwriting camp that Credits You and Sona arranged yesterday. Yes, yeah, Sona put together uh, our first ever songwriting camp. Uh, we had the opportunity because um, a studio owner that is in Sona uh, has a wonderful new recording studio called For the Record. Um, and with all these great individual writing rooms, as we're like, okay, let's, you know, let's try it. Um, we put the word out to our community of songwriters and composers and some amazing talent came back. Uh, and then yesterday we, we tried it. It was definitely an experiment and an experiment that I think was really well received. What sort of sonified it, um, because we are definitely an advocacy organization and we haven't spent enough time, I think, on career development and networking and things like that, where we really kind of made it ours um, was by providing this kind of information at the start of the camp and kind of creating a goal to come away with good metadata for all the songs that were written uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna talk about whether that worked. Um, it, the way we did it, it was two writing sessions, two sessions, a morning session and an afternoon session, 12 writers in each session. It was called 24 spots, you did the math. We divided, it's four, four writing rooms, three in each room. And uh, we, before sending them off to write their song, kind of from nothing, right? Mm -hmm. Like no other brief, just, have fun, write a song in this great space. <laughs> here's some snacks and, you know, here's some bagels and coffee. Um, we did give a little briefing um, on credits due. And so, so she sent me to be the bad guy yeah. and talk about <laughs> metadata before going to writing. So exactly. I was so afraid that that was, okay, are we killing the vibe now to start with talking about data? But I think it was appreciated by everyone. Okay. And we, we did it short, we didn't go too deep, but we think from mm -hmm. Credits to You, and I think I know that Sona is working on the same thing, that education to all music creators is so important. Yeah. Because if you don't know what, is expected of you and what you need to do to identify yourself and verify yourself and link yourself to the song, then you never will get paid and credited. And that's what, what we talked about. Exactly. So if you, again, more math, if you think about it, eight songs came out of yesterday with three writers in each room um, who have never met each other before, didn't know each other's last names going in, much less like their IPI codes. Mm -hmm. um, so how does that work? Like, how do you get that to not be a sort of shit show of wrong data? <laughs> like, like we, you know, in, in my generation of writing camps, I feel like it was a shit show. And, you know, it we kind of left it that way. If you think about all the songs that come out of writing camps, all the writers are writing two songs a day or maybe a song a day for mm -hmm. a week with all these different writers mixing up together. How are you supposed to track that? Mm -hmm. So I think we have actually been writing together yes. and I don't think I got your IPI and I didn't give you mine either. 
But oh, this is a long time ago. Long it's a long time ago. ago. I know. We're <laughs> true confessions. In We're much better stream. now, though. Yes, We're yes. This is some confession yeah. happening over here. <laughs> um, so let's get started. Let's meet our panelists. Um, my name is Lou Lise, L U L I S E. I'm an artist um, based in Los Angeles, and the thank you goes right back to you. Like, it was so, so much fun, and I'm just very grateful to have been a part of it. Awesome. Yeah, uh, my name is Justin. I'm mostly a, a songwriter, also a music producer, uh, and have an artist project. But yeah, it was such a great experience. Uh, really grateful for all the opportunities, and I, I especially feel excited about um, this like session ID stuff. So, I, uh, I I'm really grateful that you guys did that spiel. It didn't it didn't feel it didn't feel out of place to me. I okay, was good. I was excited about it. Yeah. Okay. Hi, my name is Margot. I'm from Belgium, um, but I'm based in LA. And uh, I'm a pianist, arranger, songwriter, and um, it was the first time I was writing with other people. I mean, Whoa. other, I mean, I, I collaborate a lot with lyricists because I'm writing the music and then I'm like asking for lyrics because English is not my first language mm -hmm. and I want to make sure it sounds great. You know what I mean? And, uh, but this was the first time I was um, collaborating with other songwriters. So that was a, awesome. an amazing experience and thank you so much for the opportunity. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I'm Sebi Ali. I'm an artist. I'm an artist, singer, songwriter, producer. Um, so yesterday was my actually second one, and but it was it's the best one yet. So I, I loved it. it. It's really great to be out of the spotlight as an artist to be in the backseat of just producing and writing for some other amazing talent. It was really cool and I got to really learn a lot about songwriting, even a little bit more, you know, so I loved the experience overall. And Thank so you, you identify as an artist first. Yes. That's mm -hmm. great because I think that's also quite key to this conversation mm -hmm. is what role you take on in the process, right? Like mm -hmm. yesterday you were all in the sort of like song create, co creating the copyright process, yes. mm -hmm. but then when the song gets cut mm. when it comes out that's going to be the creating the sound recording process which is another mm -hmm. thing that needs to be tracked right. so but let's just for these purposes focus on the creating of the copyright Definitely. okay so any one of you can answer when you first got in the room what did you talk about <laughs> our names our names okay, right, right. Our last names right. and, then, and shared last names yeah shared okay. last names our experiences mm -hmm. in the music world mm -hmm. how long we've been doing music for and yeah what kind of genres of music we we like to listen to or make you know was it awkward or was it it was kind of awkward yeah. to start it off but once we kind of laughed at some joke or whatever yeah. some little things that happened we just kind of mm -hmm. opened up easily can can we also maybe a step even before that when you walked into the studio you saw the people you never met before and like who I'm gonna work with and then you get <laughs> how is that feeling I honestly I was late so I couldn't even look at them I, <laughs> okay. like I was like I just like, like stood to, the to side. me it was very exciting like walking into a room of people that like you're just meeting their names and like you know we're names and Instagrams it's like okay I don't even know you yet but I'm gonna know you mm -hmm. and I think it's like for me it was like very exciting like anticipating like who am I gonna be matched with because it's yeah. I, have you done a writing camp before I have not done a writing oh, camp before, okay. but I've done I've done co-writes before yeah. where I haven't like right. met the person right. um but just like kind of like looking around and being like okay what what what's gonna happen here it's like a, lo a lottery so it was right. so for me it was very fun right. very fun exciting yeah right. uh, well, actually maybe we should back up and say what is a songwriting camp <laughs> right? Yeah. Did you know? I mean, you you've done them before, right? Yeah, I guess this is my second one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So. Right. And um, and did you have expectations around it as well? I went into this totally expectationless. Mm -hmm. I was just like, I, I I don't really know what what's gonna happen, and and I think that was that was kind of awesome, you know, because right. then it like like you were saying, it, it's it's great to just kind of walk in the room and be like, hey, these are this is a a total. Two, two mysteries of humans that might have some awesome things that we can find together, you know. And so it was really, it's a fun experience. Yeah, because most of my, most of my co-writing is with people I already know. So definitely it's, 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 um, it's a fun experience to just go into the mystery box in the studio, you know. An expression you used, and you used this as well, co-write. So that we, I mean, we might have viewers that don't really know what that is. And, sure. But just explain, that's when mm -hmm. you write a new song together with people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. When you work with others. And songwriting camp is an extension of that. When 
many people write many songs at the same time mm -hmm. and you might also change who you're working with during mm -hmm. the camp. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, they started, I can't remember when they started. I feel like when I was getting into songwriting, that was kind of around when they, I feel like I started mm -hmm. doing them. But at the time, it was mostly like publisher driven. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like publishers were trying to create, you know, like mm -hmm. alchemize their writers. Mm -hmm. When publishers organize them, I guess it's more likely that they'll have the publishing information. Mm -hmm. But when, you know, they're done by sort of, you know, people who are just hosting a writing camp, managers, yeah. songwriters do them, uh, you know, they're kind of a business model now. Mm -hmm. It's much harder to track, I mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know what your impressions are. I mean, you all wrote songs yesterday mm -hmm. and the people you meet, I mean, sometimes there's a very uh, big pressure of writing mm -hmm. the one song, mm -hmm. but, what did you feel that pressure? What I wanted to say with that, the situations where I've been in a, in a, a co-write, I meet people mm. and those people I can work with later. So yeah. the song can be, be written later. Mm. So what is your feeling about the people you met yesterday? Is it, are there people that you will continue working with? Definitely. Really? I was so happy. Yeah. I was proud of everyone. But I was so proud of my group. Oh, <laughs> I, I, have to, I have to admit, I was so yeah. proud of my group. We had, wow, I got lucky. Thank you so much. I got lucky mm. and we, we're still in touch now. We have a little uh, convo on uh, you know, WhatsApp and we want to do a nice full version of our song because mm. we like it. And uh, the pressure of writing the song, no, not really. I mean, it, it was mm. a lot of fun. It's like, it was pretty organic. It's like, let's jam on these chords. You like that? And I was lucky enough that they were wonderful performers, mm. singers. They were good. They were yeah. amazing. And it was like, they were singing. I was like, you should do a duet, you know? Let's, let's use your, both of your voices. And that then was it was, really just, you know, it was just a huge jam. Yeah. And then it, 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 that's it. It was great. Yeah. And the song might come later. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. it was a vibe. It Did was anyone a vibe. of you, because when you explain it like that, oh. That's exactly how it should be fun. Yeah, right. Did any of you feel sometime during the camp that you got a bit stressed that to perform, they're so good, so I need to be good? Or mm. was it a relaxed situation all the way? It was relaxing. But for me, it was because um, they were both like, um, like they don't produce and I did. Oh, so, so oh, that's a great thing mm -hmm. to bring up because the roles, right? You have yeah. to sort of like figure out yeah. in real time. Yeah. Who's gonna do what? Exactly. Right. So I think I, without knowing, I, like without knowing, I put myself in the producer's yeah. uh, seat. So right. when I said, "Do you guys produce?" They said, "No." And I said, mm -hmm. "I do." And then they immediately start putting down their guitars, and <laughs> I'm like, <clears throat> "What's going on?" And then they were like, "Show us some of your beats." And then I was mm -hmm. like, "Okay." And I played some of my beats that I made, and then. They liked one of them, mm -hmm. with the one that we made yeah. yesterday, and we just started working on right away. And then later on, they told me, they just after they heard I produced, they just didn't want to, you know. They had ideas, obviously yeah. they're songwriters, right. so they had licks on their guitars, whatever ideas they had. But when they heard I was a producer, they just immediately backed off, like, okay, I'm gonna just start writing. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And um, were they more like? seasoned writers or were there this first time like um, first times for them i would too? say noah was younger uh-huh so oh noah was, noah was yeah so he was more of like I, i'm a singer i, I want to sing uh, noah is 16. Wow. 16 wow. yes yeah, noah he's is, in high school he's, huh. he's amazing mm -hmm. he, he he told me he wore the berkeley shirt because mm -hmm. he wanted to let people know he's, <laughs> he's stupid. Yeah, he's, he's stupid. older and he wants, oh he wanted yeah. to be older oh, than he oh, would yeah. come across as older than me i thought yeah. 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 definitely and then oh, yeah so but uh natalia mm -hmm. she's she she says she's been writing for a while okay but and so was there sort of like a like a cheerleader in the group was there someone who was sort of like moving things along that was like, <laughs> okay because <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm because i'm used to be the singer and right. i want because i wanted to give that because they both wanted to be in the spotlight mm -hmm. which was you know it's great to see them wanting to be in the spot and i was like yo do it and then i told noah to be open more open because he was really he didn't want to really talk mm -hmm. at the beginning because he's right. like 16 and he yeah. kind of had like a social yeah anxiety kind of thing so yeah. and i tried to crack jokes make him yeah. some, like laugh yeah. and stuff 
finally he did. So uh-huh. then he was like, yeah, I'm gonna sing. You and know. he's good. Yeah, he's he, he good did. Singer. He killed it. Yeah. He killed it. Yeah. Did any of your teams get into period during the day when the vibe went down, where you got stuck into a part, or mm-hmm. was it like good all the way? I'm sorry for being the negative guy. I want to no. talk about yeah. the yeah. bad yeah. things all the time, but wrong. yeah, but that, that because that can be very common. I don't know. You've probably been in a situation where you just try and try, yeah. oh. and it takes time, Still. and the vibe just goes down, and uh. everyone goes, oh. So did any one of you end up in a situation like that? Interesting. I mean, I think I think the timeline helps to like. I often get into that sort of rut in co-writes, and I, you know, we have strategies for trying to to get out of that. But it, go have lunch. Ha- yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's a big one. That's a one of the main ones. But um, in this was like we got three hours, and, and when you were asking, you know, was there moments of stress or you know whatever, it was that last thirty minutes was like okay, like it kind of just forces something out of you, you know. Like I, I I've heard that like you know, Mozart or something like that. Like he wrote his orchestras the night before it was going to perform. And I think like that kind of pressure leads to some some great music, partly because you don't get in those ruts, you know. So I feel like that in a sense that helps um, as long as you can work on the song later. <laughs> yeah. 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 We were kind of like 24 Mozarts yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Literally. Literally. I wouldn't put myself to this yeah. <laughs> the guy is a genius, no, no, no. Oh, yeah. no. No, but I see what you mean. <laughs> oh well, did you watch the um, Beatles documentary? Yes. 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 Right. So, so wasn't it cool to sort yeah. of see, like, to sort of f- like find that through line between like what you do and what they do? Mm. Like, I do dummy lyrics all the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So like, I'm oh, just yeah. I'm always like blah 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 over like a melody that I like trying to find it, mm-hmm. and went to see them do it yeah. over it back or whatever. Yeah. It was like. Oh my God, it was yeah. so much yeah. fun. Totally. Yeah. yeah. As far as getting stuck, I think that's part of songwriting, right? And I think you you had talked about that, like there was moments that we had a line that we knew we could beat. And it was like, we all felt that it wasn't quite there. So like, you know, I went to the bathroom, usually that helps when I walk out or yep. just walking around the room. Like I just started walking yep. and like talking and like, like just not like sitting and like kind of like staring. So, yeah. but then... I like, I mean, my favorite, one of my favorite moments is like when you get stuck on a line and then, and then somebody says it and you just feel it. It's like, yep, there it is. There it is. And then boom, move on. So, I mean, we, with, with, and like, and you were talking about the pressure, like I feel the, the way that I went into it, cause I'm an artist. And usually when I go into a write for me, like I have an idea of what I want my song to sound like, or like, you know, reference tracks, but this, I was just like, okay. I did have ideas, but I didn't want to make it about me. I kind of wanted just to see what everybody had to bring and just make uh, like the best song that the moment could give us. And and so I was very like, um, I didn't feel the need to like record because I feel like when I get to recording mode, that takes me a long time. And then, mm. so I was with my group, I was like, let's just like really get this song mm. going. And I think when we, we put the pressure off of recording it, that's when we were really like allowed to just like relax and, 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 you know, think of this story and try to make it as clear as, as possible. As it were in your situation where you became the producer, just it just happened. Yeah. Was that the same for you, your teams or was it more like, you know, I, I'm the producer, I'm the artist. How did you have a smooth role, how you divided the roles or? Yeah, in our, in our conversation, like one of the first things that we t- talked about was like the kinds of things that we're working on, the roles that we play generally. Um, I think what was funny in our group was... Um, I'm mostly more of like the like chords and and melodies and lyrics. I like I you know I dabble in production, uh, but uh, it, it, but I realized that there were two of us in the room that were more like like songwriters, mm-hmm. and then we had an artist that was like okay we're gonna work on a song for this artist, and so I was like okay I think I'm gonna have to like shift into the producer role a little bit. And um, what was interesting. Um, was this was maybe the first time I've written in a setting where we had an engineer right mm. there in a fully oh, yeah, yeah, set up studio. Right. So I, um, I definitely, I've never written with an engineer there who's like, I would, I would just be like, hey, give us a kick drum like this. You know, I would like, I would just like ask him for stuff. And I really leaned on Ruben and he was amazing. Don't he would get oh. spoiled yeah. now because yeah. all, yeah. not yeah. all yeah. sessions I was in your just about to say, yeah. My session, I had the engineer, yeah. I was the producer, uh-huh. I was co-writing, yeah. I was doing everything. Ooh. And yes. Because I was so busy doing all that, mm. my take was only like two minutes. Mm. Like I, I took two minutes, like the last two minutes, yeah. I just 
punched in mine, and then we just left. Funny. Huh. Wow. Crazy. Wait, yeah. did you not have an engineer in your no. room? No. Oh, interesting. I engineered my own session for the. Uh, um, I know a little bit of about logic, but they were like, you know, logic. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I think I yeah. got the hang of it. I engineered the session. I'm very proud of myself. Nice. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm like, I want to do it more now. I want to yeah. because I think as a songwriter, producer, instrumentalist, artist, I think it's important to have technical chops. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely, it's so important. Like especially nowadays, where we've been, we're being asked to do everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Creating content, writing, organizing rehearsals. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're yeah. managing, booking. I mean, we're just doing everything yeah. and self-management is kind of the new way of doing things. I don't know. It's just, it's mm -hmm. becoming huge. So mm -hmm. technical chop, I mean, you, you got to put your, yourself out there. So mm -hmm. I want to do it more. And it was inspiring. Ah, good. It was inspiring. Yeah, really good. Mm -hmm. Really cool. Like you know? I like hearing that. That's amazing. No, and it's true. Like the division of labor was so clear mm -hmm. when we were, you know, like really like, like I'd say like, Audis, right? Like 2000 to 2010 was still sort of the part of like what was sort of pre-streaming and and like producers to producers, artists. Were, I mean, there was always overlap. There's always singer songwriters, but everyone kind of had a role. Publishers did what they did. Yeah. Everyone kind of did the thing. But because I think of the economics of streaming, where you're not making as much money as we did when there was physical product. Yeah participating in the master and the, mm -hmm. in the participating in the sound recording and like being a producer, being the artist, being the featured artist mm -hmm. gets you paid better. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So right. you kind of have to. Mm -hmm. Which is yeah. interesting. It feels like that's something you're trying to fix at Sona, right? Mm -hmm. It's something we're trying to fix. Look, I think it could also be seen as an evolution, mm -hmm. right? Like we can look at it like, cause your generation are the ones that are like, you're just doing it. Like you're not really, we're whining about it because mm -hmm. we're like, this isn't how you, you know, this isn't how uh, it was. Yeah. Like we were able to just be songwriters. We didn't have to worry about yeah. like recording and being, the, you know, we could just do that. I don't think you have that luxury anymore mm -hmm. and you've kind of adapted to right. it. So why go backwards? Mm -hmm. Like you've adapted to it. You're sort of taking that on. You know, you could say it's like, oh, it's not fair. It used to be much easier. But I, th I think having more skill sets is actually yeah. mm -hmm. gives you more independence. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's good now we just, but we do have to get you paid better. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Can I ask you, you, you said that you brought up one of your tracks. What are your views on, on that? Let's say that someone, because now I'm getting down to how things works in the backside where when we're gonna start doing yeah. the registrations and stuff. Right, now we're gonna start, like you're done with the song, now you're sort of figuring out what's the title, what's the, you know, who's producing, what's the timeline for that, you know, are you going to finish it, are you going to do more work on it, are you going to get together again, mm -hmm. right? And if someone brings up a track, that is actually more a recording. And But it's so common today that mm -hmm. producers are part of the songwriting. What I try to explain all the time that the second a producer brings up a track and it's part of the songwriting, that producer is a songwriter, not mm -hmm. a producer. Mm -hmm. What is your view on that? If someone brings up a track, do you see the producer as a songwriter or as a producer? Mm -hmm. Songwriter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah songwriter. Because mm -hmm. a song is also a sonic mm -hmm. experience. Mm -hmm. It's not only about the skeleton and the structure, it's also a huge, a full-on sonic experience. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. sounds that will be chosen will be part of the song, mm -hmm. I guess. That's my view on mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. I agree. I mean, I think it's, you know, again, there's the generation before me where all guitars on the lap, right? Or piano. Yes. And like that's, yep. like, that's how the songwriting process happened. But when I was coming up, that's yep. when the, the phrase top liner came up. Mm -hmm. and, um, mm -hmm. and there is like the idea of like a track and a top line. Yep as a song and the track is part of the composition like, mm -hmm. and that right. has again evolved and we've adapted. Mm -hmm. And that is in credits too, it's, it's so interesting because what we want to highlight here is that every creator that's part mm -hmm. of the creation of what we call the song that what we can listen to in the end, everyone needs to know their mm -hmm. roles. Right. So for you when you produce and you bring up a track and but then you're the producer but you're also the songwriter. Mm -hmm. Do you define yourself as both or do you define yourself as the producer? I would say both. Mm -hmm. Right. So you'll take you'll up. get a piece of the copy, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. You'll get a piece of the writing. Yeah, but I also came up with the the melodies as well. Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. 
I think I, I, I could say both, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then, yeah, go ahead. I was just saying, but when it's just a track situation, I think it's interesting because I agree that like uh, the track or the chords, or the arrangement of the song has so much to do with how the song is, you know, perceived by everybody. But like producers get paid to make the track and then they get paid to be on the song, right? And if you're not the artist as a songwriter, you're not, that's what I struggle with right. because I pay that my producers, I, yeah. I pay my producers and then they get my royalties as well, yeah. which is, you know, they, they deserve it. But yeah. I just feel like, the, the yeah. payment towards artists slash songwriters is so different. And, yeah. and I feel like they get paid a lot better <laughs> for, for helping make this thing, but it's, yeah, yeah the, the payment. It's, so it's, what would, in your opinion, be a more fair deal? Would it also be that you also own the part of the recording yeah. since See, I don't know. I don't know. Cause it, cause like if I didn't do any of it, like I, I'm a person that is like, oh yeah, I, I didn't do any of that. Or, but, but maybe if it becomes a more like camaraderie thing of like, no, this song wouldn't exist without what you did. And there's like an agreement. I don't have the answer, but I, I feel like it could be more fair in, in that I sense. would say for artists, you should just buy the exclusive. Um, so buy the, to the production, production, mm -hmm. yeah, of the beat, like and a work, like a fee for service work for hire yeah, situation. Like, yeah, some, some like that. Because a lot of people nowadays, because um, my friends, they're mostly rappers, mm -hmm. and they buy their beats offline, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then they don't read their agreements and their contracts mm -hmm. when they buy it. Mm -hmm. So they just buy like the non-exclusive ones, and then like they the royalty-free ones yeah. online. Yeah, 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 and then yeah, they and then they just um, yeah. use it, and then they end up being sued or like, <gasps> you know. Oh. Yeah. So what we need to highlight here is that there's no right or wrong. Right. Right. Nothing Absolutely. is right or wrong. Mm -hmm. So it's only a negotiation. Yeah. Negotiate. Mm -hmm. So, and that comes down to everyone involved needs yeah. to transparently talk yeah. about it. Which how, is awkward. How is in it to talk about it? Situation, it's yeah. awkward. It is. Like I, I'm yeah. in, in my session, like I brought it up. Because we were we 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 got very vulnerable. We got to know each other. We were talking about whatever was on our hearts, what we're gonna write about, and then we kept. And then we were writing, and then I was like, "Wait, guys! Like we were supposed to do the app thing, and then, and and and, yeah. and or, or you know, using yeah. the tool that you taught us about, yeah. and and they're like, oh, we could do that later.' And it was like, I got what they were saying because obviously we were we were in a very emotional place, and yeah. so bringing up like the technical side yeah. was um, not. It was like not the moment to do it, mm -hmm. but when we did it later, it was very easy and very like we we did it boom boom boom. And I think just like that, we're in this technological mm -hmm. generation. Um, the way it worked was very easy, but oh. but if one of us hadn't remembered to do it, it probably wouldn't have been done. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We we just we just started off uh, right after we chose the beat when we were starting to write. We just got that out the way. Mm -hmm. Okay, you yeah, got your information yeah. shared, yeah, and you were, yeah. mm -hmm. you were on the tool thing, on the thing, and, thing just, and you yeah. just start, you just went, you mm -hmm. did it, and then you're yeah. done. But and you didn't have a title yet. No. Right. But mm -hmm. at the same time, I was just like, let's just okay. even. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I know I did a lot, but I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Even right, up. right. You're just so you went for even splits. Yeah. This yeah. actually is a good time to talk about splits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. How, yeah how I was gonna say on you know, so you introduced the time by saying. One of the best ways to to you know uh, talk about credits and ownership is to just go in with a clean slate of even splits. Mm -hmm. Just like no, because I think there can be a strange thing of of like power dynamics yes. sometimes, especially. I think uh, Lulise, is that right? Yes. yes. <laughs> what you were saying about um, you know producers getting paid for the track and then also getting paid, you know, like often the person with the most power in the room gets the most money. And it's yes. not even a matter of yes. who did what. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and I think that is, a, I, I, I really like the idea of just uh, like making it a standard, you know, yeah. of like even splits. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going on a rant here for yeah. a second. Yeah, uh, do, it. The, do it. it. There's a, there's a um, you know, when you're talking about like producers and writers getting what part of the, the master or the, you know, the actual song. Um, I have a friend who mixes for a band um, that there's sort of like a collective and there's like a lot of people involved. Um, and from what I understand, uh, they just like everyone gets paid exactly the same for the royalties, like oh. bassist, drummer, writer, producer on every part of the royalties. 
everyone gets an even split and they send an email every month with like, we're all getting paid this much mm -hmm. um, for, the, for the song you wrote on mm -hmm. and, or, or worked on in any yeah. capacity. And I just think that's an interesting way to do it because yeah. um, I think there is something to like all boats rising together, you know, like, and so like, hey, I want you to be winning too. And if I'm winning and you're winning, we'll make more things. I think that can create a better environment, you know. Um, bands, like bands sort of, a lot like, of bands, like the one, like U2 is yeah. still a band because they gave, you know, Bono gave writing credit to the band. Right, like right, he right. Shares, mm. He shares right. the copyright. Yeah. There is some, um, I don't know if you uh, have the same opinion, but since we have been doing this for a very long time, for when you were in a co-writing situation or on a camp, I would say that my my understanding is that the normal number of songwriters are three. Mm -hmm. From my situation, we were actually a team of three that worked together mm -hmm. and we split it equal between us. Yeah. But we were seen as one in the collaboration because we if you work with two others we were three then we're five then you're down to 20 uh, yeah. percent yeah. so in those situations yeah. we were told sometimes before that no we you get 33 so what Which do you think about you guys are getting 10 yeah we get less <laughs> yeah, but yeah. but so yeah. what is your view of talking about splits before even getting into uh the actual writing i mean i i agree personally that like um if we're all gonna put all of our energy into this, let's just split it evenly. Mm -hmm. Even, right. and I mean, I've just believed like, if you hadn't said that thing to me, I wouldn't have brought up that yeah. line or whatever. Yeah. Right. You know, even if this person like, like, cause we had experience of like, uh, uh, the girl, it was, it was the Jason who played guitar, Lauren, who was mainly lyrics. She said she mainly wrote lyrics. So she didn't do a lot of the chords or the melodies or whatever, but like, I don't think the song would have come out without her like talking to us the way that she did. So mm -hmm. to me, I always go in like fair, even, mm -hmm. but I'm also an up and comer. Like I'm not, I don't I have a name behind me with, with like all this power. So I don't know how it works. No. But let me like, give you another angle and see what you think about it. Let's say that you get an opportunity to work with a really successful songwriter right. or an artist. Yeah. And that songwriter or producer or artist knows that if I bring you on, yeah. you will get so much out of it mm -hmm. and because you will can say that i work with that person right. and that will give you so much credibility and right. give you more is that worth more uh, spl uh, percent in a split or should it like 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 that i wouldn't get as much like i wouldn't get an even split with them but right. I, no, but I right. it could right. be a 60 40 for example right yeah. i mean you... for me it would be worth it you mm -hmm. know um because this is what i want to do and mm -hmm. I, I want to keep going and, mm -hmm. and get my name out there and work with as many people as possible and, and that's but that's like the bittersweet thing about yeah. being, mm -hmm. you know yeah. loving the art and wanting to do it mm -hmm. for the rest of your life and doing it with bigger people it's like you're, you're willing to give away your pie yeah so much mm -hmm. and yeah. because for the love of the art and the you don't people. think so <laughs> <laughs> after 30 or 35 years of career i hope for you that you're able to get better deals yeah. Right? Yes. So yes. maybe that's the point too, yes. at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Because you have skills that we yeah. are mm -hmm. still developing. Mm -hmm. Right. And you have so much knowledge and you've been working on the craft store for so long. My question is for you, would you be okay to have even splits with absolutely right. new people? Like yeah, we will give you more because you're much more talented than we are. <laughs> <laughs> um, speak for yourself. Uh, <laughs> um, no, I, 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 I think there's a great uh, one of the things that came out of yesterday was Sona's board is a lot of established like kind of baller songwriters, and uh, they were there and and they itching to write with oh. you guys like they like songwriters were kind of going oh i want i want to do this so i think yeah. i think if you're just kind of approaching someone like shelly piken like out of the blue you hit her up on dm and you're like i want to write with you right. she's gonna be a little standoffish and be like and there might be an exchange where she's doing you a favor mm -hmm. but when she gets exposed to your talent and understands that there, that there is a kind of even exchange yeah. of like her experience for your, you know, inspiration and and fresh ideas and things like that. I think it's a different it's a different mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. 
right? So so it depends on right. the sort of approach. Right. Definitely. Yeah, I think that's the thing. But we should get into the rights. Let's go to, because yeah. we're talking, like, this is so awesome about process. Mm -hmm. I love talks about process. But I think we now should talk about um, what happens next. Mm. So you wrote these songs. There were eight songs that came out of yesterday. We have, we've lined up opportunities for these songs where we have music supervisors, a &R people, um, managers who want who were there at the showcase last night and just heard these you know first time these just written brand new songs um in the room performed that day and want to do stuff with them mm -hmm. so um because they were really good <laughs> so now that you know that now that there's another there's an end game to this what's the next step like and how do you, do you what's the conversation around um publishing are you with PROs? Do you, you know, what do, what do you do? Well, I love that the app simplified a lot of that. Yeah. Um, so I'm very excited about session ID, you know, and on the conversation of um, splits as well, just like it, it makes it much easier rather than saying like, what are the splits? Um, you, you say, let's let's open the app and let's just get it set up. And that's a, a easier conversation. Uh, but But also I think, you know, so I have those people's info in my app they're already connected um, and so now like uh, yeah it, it feels like an easier process to continue uh, working on it along with them. Did like, you discuss before you started what the song was for? No right mm -hmm. you just sent us in there like write a song so yeah, yeah. Like, we didn't even know these opportunities existed when we were <laughs> writing. Mm -hmm. yeah. no. I wonder if that makes it better. Yeah. I wonder too. Because <laughs> we always get a brief I always get a brief or like you know you're writing for Kelly Clarkson or whatever, yeah. and then the you, who looking list, yeah, the, the who's, who's looking, looking list, list. Yeah. right? And yeah. then you sort yeah. of try and imagine you're them, and then you kind of t almost like typecast them, or you like stereotype their what you think they would want, yeah. Yeah. and it never is. Right, yeah, right. Interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I, yeah. if you don't know it, I thought yeah, it was I was gonna say, yeah, I enjoyed just like let's just write a song because this is what we like to do, mm -hmm. right. and we, that was like so rewarding. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. yeah. A few years back, and I said, "Who's looking list?" Because when you were in a co-write session, there was always someone that said before we started, oh. "Who's looking? Who's, who's looking? looking? Yeah, oh. who's looking?" Who's and there was the one name that came up during many Leanne Rhymes. Leanne Rhymes. <laughs> she yeah. was always looking. Yeah, always <laughs> looking. Yeah. Always looking. Yeah. 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 So that was funny. That's but awesome. it's interesting to hear that you prefer to keep it open. Uh, I mean. Yeah, it was fun. It mm. was fun. I, I don't know. I, I have, I've always wanted to do the songwriting camps because mm -hmm. I feel like what's better than just getting with people that like to do what you like to do. So that was my first experience mm. and it, it was fun. I, I, it would be interesting to write with that. Obviously, you guys have more experience mm. doing that with the who's looking or whatever. But, um, but during the process, did you ever talk about later in the process, this song could be good for a specific artist yeah. or... No, I don't Or a show or whatever. Well, yeah. And I we I'm gonna produce it tonight. Okay. We're talking now. We want to make a better version of it. Okay. Because yeah. we just have like piano and vocals. So now yeah. we're like uh, connecting with a producer, and we're gonna work on it. You're gonna. Work and they're gonna retract their vocals. Produce, an outside producer. Yes. Oh. Interesting. And they're gonna oh, okay. retract their vocals. Okay. Because nice. mm -hmm. I engineered, but me. Nah. Right. Okay. <laughs> you know. <laughs> right. So so we don't know for what, but we wanna. We want to have a better version. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In right. my in my group, we didn't talk about what it, who it was even going to be for. Because like right. there was two singers, right. and like I think it the song is different than my stuff, yeah. and it's different than his stuff. But we just you know we came up with this little baby of a mm -hmm. song, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so now I'm telling you, right? There is sort of an end game. There wasn't yesterday, right. but then we now there is yeah. an end game to this. So what do you what do you do now? Mm -hmm. I feel like for for us, it's like okay, we gotta we gotta produce this song mm -hmm. now. Now now that we had the song, now now we need to dream up. What yeah. like we like what we how we want it to sound as a full mm -hmm. you know production and, and, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. for for our group um, their vocals are pretty solid now yeah because I mixed them okay <laughs> but I got to do a couple more takes on mine okay and then okay. finish it after that uh -huh. probably polish a couple more of those harmonies I got to call them up uh -huh. um, but yeah I think it'll be a pretty cool. Yeah, cool. afterwards. Awesome. Yes. And are you all with PROs? Are you all registered with yes. a, a PRO? Okay, right. Mm -hmm. Anyone published? Yes. Yeah? You are? But in Belgium. Okay. Yeah. Everything in Belgium, so I need to register here. Okay. Mm. Okay. For future. Work. And you're with a Belgian PRO, right? Yes. Okay. That's yes. interesting. Mm. Right. 
Okay. So everything is published through them. Okay. Mm. You said, now we are going to produce it. So when you say that, we, it's an interesting thing because I, as I've been working as a producer, it's like when you do camp or co-write session after co-write session, suddenly you have a mountain of songs. Mm. Mm -hmm. How do you reflect on that? Who, who should really take lead on making sure that the song gets as ready so we can start sending it out? Yeah. Well, we we haven't like talked about it yet. We just we were just like, oh, let's like finish the demo. But mm -hmm. um, now that like there's an opportunity on the table, I feel like we need to like, have a discussion. Like, are we gonna put money into this? Because I'm not oh. a producer. You know, mm -hmm. one of them is. I don't know how strong his skills are. So we have to. I feel like decide mm. for you know for me personally. I would I would want us to decide as a group and then see you know who kind of takes the leadership role mm. on mm. finishing it. Mm. Right. That's I don't know what you say about that, but we, yeah. after, when you've been doing it some years, you really value it. Is how is this song so good? So we gonna spend more time on it, right? Right. Because if you write song after song yeah. after song after song and right. always do a full demo production, your right. time management is just terrible. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. yeah. Right. So what's worth spending your time on? Right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's. I, I, so I think yeah. I think in our group, um, probably. I mean, I. I think. Obviously, you bringing up that there are people interested in these songs mm -hmm. gives a certain value to these songs. Yeah, it's like we want yeah. to make these, uh, you, you know, of better. Um, and so, but <laughs> right, yeah. Um, I, I think in our group we got we were, you know, whether or not you know it ends up with some other artist or in some other placement. I think we, we liked kind of thinking about you know we we had one artist in the room that we were sort of writing for her project yeah. and so I think I, I tend to when I'm writing with an artist kind of defer to what they want to do mm -hmm. usually and I'll like help and support with that but I think it's sort of like okay. wherever she wants to take the song I'm just gonna help make that happen you know right. the, the, okay. the artist yeah but can I say that the most exciting thing about this event is to create a new community mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and we should write together with other people from the camp, yeah. the camp. Yeah. Right. like Mix the this is this is building a new community and now i want to check these people out i want to yeah. go to their shows i want to play with them yeah. Oh, yeah. you know like yeah. this is gr this is the most exciting part mm. to build a community yeah. so great that you bring you know? that up because yeah. we touched it in the beginning it's not about maybe writing the song at the yeah. camp. Oh, yeah. You're meeting new people yes. yeah. that oh, yeah. you can work with for the rest of your life. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, and getting, you know, it's so funny because we're sort of like bouncing between, you know, the the art and the craft, right? The mm -hmm. art and the, yeah. the fun and the joy and the, the thing that we would do for free anyway. Mm -hmm. And then monetizing this thing that we would do for free anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And it's awkward, right? Yeah. And and how, and so when you, maybe the sort of like takeaway from this conversation for, for, for me mm -hmm. is, is like the timing, mm -hmm. right? Like don't, because what we're trying to come up with at Credit Stew is like we want creators to feel empowered by this, that we want them to take control of their, you know, of their work and their register. And like, this is the part you can control, so do it. Mm -hmm. But we don't want it to, Im for Im like, mm -hmm. we don't want it to ruin or, or like mm -hmm. impose on the creative process whatsoever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it is kind of about timing. And it sounds like when you're in your situation, you just found, like found it. Yeah. It was after. For you, it was at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Maybe for other groups, it's going to be like, oh, you know what, this this piece of the song we're going to keep and this one we're going right. to ditch and we're going to like actually rewrite yeah. this and add a producer to it or mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. And then it's going to be a different song yeah. for a different thing. So um, it might have new people on it, right? <laughs> so, no. Right, I know that. And that happens all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then you have that conversation after yeah. that happens. But I think my takeaway is like what we can bring back to the sort of credits due piece is mm -hmm. when you talk about splits mm -hmm. and registration and information and actually the kind of keeping them separate. Mm. Yeah. Huh. Mm -hmm. From For those of you who have been in co-write situations before, uh, this time we, we, we use the tool and there are many tools for that help creators on the market. Before, on the other songs, how did you do it then? Did you use pen and paper? Have split you sheets. ever, did you do, have you done split sheets? Yeah. Yeah. Did you get IPI numbers or just names? Um, we would just make them fill it out. <laughs> like their names? I mean, yeah. like on split sheet is like IPI number, address, mm -hmm. 
phone number. Yeah. And you got that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's yeah. really, really good. Oh. Yeah. That's super good. Yeah. That's a good habit. Yeah. 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 And yeah. also there to talk about not only that you've been part of it as a songwriter, if, if you've been singing, you should also be a performer. Mm -hmm. Because if your voice. Vo voice is used in the end recording, mm -hmm. you actually mm -hmm. are a performer yeah. on that recording. So it's so important mm -hmm. that we what Credit Stew stands for, mm -hmm. that the five data elements that needs to be captured in the studio mm -hmm. by the only people that knows it. Mm -hmm. You yeah. guys, no yeah. one else can say that. Yeah. So we need the IPIs for everyone. Yeah. We need the uh, ISNIs and IPNs for the performers yeah. that are, belongs to um, in a society that uses IPN. Yeah. We need to know the ISWC and the ISRC. Yeah. All those five identifiers are so important. Mm -hmm. Before yesterday, were you all aware of this or was this information new to you? Can I just say something real quick? Um, when I said fill it out, some people might not know what it is. Like after you fill it out, make a copy so everyone can have it. Don't yeah. just... That's yeah. really good. Uh, yeah, I was just... I didn't want them to misunderstand. And where do you, where do you send that paper then? Um, eventually, I we didn't get to release that song. Mm -hmm. so, And that was my first time using a split sheet. So mm -hmm. I don't really know. Mm -hmm. I have actually a tool through my PRO, which is pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. I can fill it out online. I can say I'm the composer, songwriter, whatever arranger. I mm -hmm. choose my role and then I can look up in a huge repertoire of names throughout the world mm -hmm. and it's going to be automatically connected to the person I was working wow. with. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing. So I worked with this lyricist from Greece. I looked her up and I found her name mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. it. It's 50-50 music and lyrics. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. So, so really distribution? No, it's the PRO. Mm -hmm. Like for the yeah. copyright? Yeah, 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 for the copyright. Yeah. Yeah. That's we great. Gotta, we got to get on that level. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> Europe is like yeah. way ahead. <laughs> I, yeah, so that. that brings us to another thing that's so important that before songwriters leave the room, agree on the title, even if it's temporarily. Right. Mm -hmm. So you all refer to the same title. Mm -hmm. Has that been a challenge for you before? That, do you even discuss what the title is? Or I think titles are like the easy, for me, has been the easy part. Usually mm -hmm. like that's pretty clear. Um, I, I think that the hard part has been like, I worked with a producer who had an artist name, so he had oh. multiple IPIs. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that, you know, it was kind of a mess mm -hmm. getting, yeah. getting that too. I, know, I knew what all those uh, codes were that you were talking about, mm -hmm. but I did have a question, like the ISRC, that's not created until the song is like done, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that it, and that we need it. and you do completely right. But we also when you say song, uh -huh. that is when oh, we talk the about the song is like ready to release the, the so, sound recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah so the, the sound, sound recording mm -hmm. and the, and Language. this is so <laughs> yeah. confusing. Yes, because okay. we, we always talk about the song, but we need to. In my head, I also when I always when I hear song. There's two things. Yes, yeah. there's a right. musical right. work and there's a, 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 a recording <laughs> to it. Yeah. So, but you're right. The ISRC uh, gets allocated to the recording mm -hmm. when you release it. Right, right, right. And but there's so many different ways of doing this. When you're signed to a label, they 99.9% .9 the label do that for you mm -hmm. because you're signed to the label and you could work with it. They're, they want to do that. When you self-release through what we call an aggregator, mm -hmm. the tune course, the CD babies, the distro, distro kids, kids, and then they have services to right. do this. Okay. But when you self-release, you can consider yourself as the owner of the recording. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of your own label. Mm -hmm. So you can actually do it yourself as well. You can apply for being an ISRC agent to do your own uh, code. And that is an organization called IFBI that do that for you. Huh. So it's many different ways of doing this. Yeah. I recommend to do it the simple way, the okay. simplest way. And I mean, to get it from your label or to get it from the, 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 the aggregator is the same. But it's open. You can do whatever you want. So for the split sheets, you send it to like whoever your distributor is? Split sheet, interesting that you say that because we can actually talk about split sheets for both the musical work and the recording. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, I've never heard of that for no. the recording. No, because what we refer to when you say the split sheets for how the songwriters share yeah. the musical work, 
th that should be sent if you have a publisher to your publisher mm -hmm. and also probably your manager if you have a manager mm -hmm. want a copy of that okay. if you're self-published you do as you said you do it with your PRO mm -hmm. because if as a songwriter you need to have a PRO membership if you want to get paid for for your song mm -hmm. because you cannot get an ISWC if you don't have an IPI mm -hmm. so you need that connection right. so that should be sent to your your manager or mm -hmm. publisher or do your registration directly on mm -hmm. your PRO but in the meantime, before you get to the point, like, like a lot of songs just sort of like you write in, and we should probably wrap up. But while we, um, you write the song, you started a song, some will have a life, others might just like not. So what do you, so the ones that sort of continue on, what I would suggest is get like exactly what Nicholas is saying, mm -hmm. like get all the information you can mm -hmm. from in the room. You were the only ones that were there. You were the mm -hmm. only ones that know what it is. Believe that it will have a life mm -hmm. and then <laughs> and then don't lose it. No. <laughs> like hold on to that information, whether it's through the app, in a database, like a spreadsheet on your computer, do some kind of thing. And then if you're published, yes, you do have a place to send it. You send it to your publisher. They'll keep that, you know, uh, under control. But if you're not, um, and the song comes out, congratulations, mm. like you own the publishing mm -hmm. on a song that's coming out mm. yeah. and you will be able to publish your own song or get somebody to admin it or something like that. And that's a nice amount of leverage and control that you'll have. Mm. Um, and, and that split sheet, that ownership will actually, the thing that you did in the room will be really valuable to you mm. because you're going to like know, you know, what you own, what the, you know, that you're that you are the pu publisher on it, yeah. who you wrote it with. It's mm. absolutely, absolutely like a great habit to get into mm. to just manage that information mm. yourself. I feel like Cred is doing the tool that yeah. we used yesterday. Yeah. It's like the future of spreadsheets. Yeah. 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 All of yeah, this. It's, it's all, it's yeah. simplifies it all and yeah. it's, it's just yeah. the it's so much better. cloud. Then just yeah. like writing it out yeah. or putting it in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's true. And it's it doesn't true. matter how you do it, but yeah. the most important thing, do it. At yes. the point of creation yes. when you yes. do it mm -hmm. because tomorrow you go to a new session and then another another yeah. five yeah. days later ah oh, what happened five days ago totally. you know yeah. so i don't remember any of the songs ever. no, no. <laughs> totally. no. <laughs> but will you guys go to songwriting camps again yes, yes. can we come tomorrow yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 there's one this weekend right you, just yeah. Yeah. you know what i just want to give a shout out to carlos and this this oh. studio yeah because yeah. 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 uh, yeah. You don't, I mean, we're doing this, you know, we're we're filming this um, panel here. Thank you, Carlos. Mm. Um, we're doing this panel here. Oh, the way I know this studio is uh, my husband is a producer and and his he and his brother are both produced. And the, the recordings that come out of this place, when you get a chance to like look at what's in the, um, what's in the booth. It, Can't wait. It is mm. sick. Like it is one of the, like a world-class, like, beautiful beautiful studio um that has been like rebuilt from the ground up and so it's just such a shame we're not recording the note of music here yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. such a, like so irony so what, I, know, I know i know i know what the majority of all the producers nowadays around the world see as plugins on their computer yeah. he has them yeah. physical here like for yeah. real yeah. Yeah. yeah it's called water sound it's in uh studio city in california oh. it's an amazing place and um i I, I do feel like, oh, this is so silly that we're not recording <laughs> yeah. anything yeah. here. But um, yeah, it's it's aspirational. Hmm? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. We'd love to come back and record here. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, such, it's a great yeah. space. Um, I think we can wrap up, but I want to thank you so much, so much for your you openness, for yeah. your just just letting the down. This has been like the download, the debrief, the postmortem from yesterday. We want to yeah. kind of like you know, just sort of know what worked, what didn't, and like how the process was for you. And, and so that we can take that information back and kind of build it into our messaging when we talk about this stuff. So, yeah. and very I mean, helpful. all the discussions about what data identifiers and all that is important, but in the end of yesterday, when we were done, when you guys performed the songs, yeah. I was standing in the corner, goosebumped, like, shit, yeah. this is what it's all about. Yeah. They, yeah. When people get together, create songs, create music, and 
I mean, you guys were amazing. Three hours later, we were listening to you playing songs for us. And uh, it's just thank you for advocating mm -hmm. for us to keep doing this, you know, for yeah. generations yeah. and generations. Yeah. We need you guys. So. Thank you. So, thank you. Um, <laughs> glad to know that it's going to continue on. Good answer. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Such so, important work. Thank yeah. you. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, there will be more of these. We're going to keep going with credits to uh, live streams for of the community and we'll be back mm -hmm. with another one and we want to say thanks to all the supporters oh, yes. to, uh, to credits to you and we we need to be more uh, to join credits to you it's completely free uh, mm -hmm. credits to you is a campaign so you only support by sending us uh, your logo and mm -hmm. we will add the logo on the website the address is creditstu.org. Please go check it out. Uh, all information is there. If you have any questions, there's an email that you can uh, reach out to. Yes, and thanks to Dima and Garrett Levin and Graham Davies at the Ivers Academy, yeah. um, who really helped support this and put this together with yeah. us. Perfect. Thank you, Sona. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you guys so much. Ooh, yeah. Thank you.